Okay, nerds, uh, we have we have a show. We have a huge music section, and it makes me happy. Uh, we have just basically, in general, a huge show. We have all of the headlines. Hopefully you saw the teasers. We're not going to touch the headlines on this teaser. Uh, thank you once again. I am Dustin, and this is the news. Okay, um, no housekeeping right now. Uh, I take that back. There is a little bit of housekeeping. So, as it stands right now, the end of October, uh, we will likely only have one episode for that last week of op- October, maybe even the first week of September. Uh, I mean, sorry, November. Uh, the last week of October, first week of September, there might only be one episode both of those weeks, and it'll probably be the first episode for the last week of October and the second episode for the first week of November because I am doing something of a vacation. So uh, there's that. We will be, I'll remind you a couple of times between now and then. Uh, And then also uh, the first week of September, see, I was right with the September part. The first week of September, uh, I have a big video shoot. So I don't know how that's going to affect the show, but it very likely will affect the show. I have a client. I have a very large project ahead of me. Uh, So if I can get to, it'll probably be a pretty stripped down version of the show, maybe an even shorter version of the show, as I very likely won't be able to get all of the research done uh, because of the project. You know, the paying things kind of take priority over the the passion things uh, most of the time. So uh, that being said, those are the things that are coming up as we get closer to those dates. I will be refreshing your memories. Uh, so yeah, there's housekeeping. Today's episode is once again sponsored by woo, the Your Mom Thinks I'm Advertiser Friendly shirt. So go check that out over in the nerd stores over on the website, generalnerdy.net. All of the places uh, that I post most of these episodes, I feel like, get the that link. So uh, you can get that shirt there. Before we jump into the news, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell so that when I post the news, you know about it, and uh, click the like uh, the the like up thumbs, <laughs> the thumbs up like button. Oh man, this is gonna be a goofy episode. All right, so all of that being said, now let's jump into music news. Uh, music is the biggest section. I've said that once, and I'm saying it again because it is. Uh, each section even has a couple of follow ups, and I I ordered everything correctly. It's so awesome. I did. Decent notes this time. Uh, Follow-ups and corrections happen in just about every uh, section for this episode. Music is no exception. We're doing, uh, we have probably the most follow-ups in this section. Uh, The first of which being Serge Tankian. Tonkian? I don't remember. Uh, So Serge, the lead singer from System of a Down, has announced that he will be releasing that record of uh, potential System of a Down songs, the songs that he wanted to end up as System of a Down songs, but, you know, being as the state of those things is not ideal right now. Thank you very much, Darren Malankian. Uh, Being as that's the case, he said, yeah, screw it. I'm just going to do it as a solo EP. And that solo EP now has a name and a rough release time frame. So the name of the solo EP is Elasticity, and uh, this fall is the time frame for its release. Also, as part of this announcement, he uh, made it known that he just filmed the video for what is presumed to be the first single called Rumi, R-U-M-I. I'm pretty sure that's how you would pronounce that. Rumi, maybe Rumi. I don't know. Uh, So that being said, that's what we have there. Next, we're talking about Mr. Bungle. Uh, We talked a couple of weeks ago. It might have even been a little bit longer than that, like a month or so ago, uh, about how Mr. Bungle kept kept teasing different things from the studio, what's going on, uh, pictures of Scott Ian, uh, who is their guitar player now. Either way, uh, there is now, these things have come to fruition. We have the announcement that the name of the project they were working on, uh, where to go, is The Raging Wrath of the Easter Bunny Demo. Uh, so for longtime fans of Bungle, you will know that this is the title of their uh, demo, their actual demo from 1986. This is them re-recording those songs, as well as, I believe it was two, maybe three covers at the end of this EP. Uh, so... 
Yeah. The the I didn't see Oh, I did see. Haha. <laughs> October 30th is the release date for this and it will obviously come out on Epicac Records because it's Mr. Bungle and that's just the way uh, Mike Patton does things. So, uh, next we're talking about Stairway to Heaven and this is just getting to the point of ridiculousness at this point. Uh, so, uh, real quick TLDR, <sighs> approximately four and a half, almost five years ago now, 2016, uh, the current owner of the, uh, or the current uh, trustee for the estate of the songwriter Randy Wolf, or Randy, quote unquote, California was his nickname, Randy California Wolf, uh, the guy who is in charge of his estate brought up a lawsuit because Randy Wolf wrote a song that sounds very similar to to some years, uh, to Stairway to Heaven in 2016. Stairway to Heaven was released in, oh, you know, the 70s. So it was approximately 40 years <laughs> after the song was published that this lawsuit was brought up saying it was copyright infringement and that that, that Led Zeppelin copied uh, Randy Wolf's style <laughs> uh, and it got shot down and then it was found that there was an issue with the original jury trial and so it got brought back to court and then it got shot down again and now the uh, owner so that brings us basically up to current that's all you really need to know about it uh, and now the uh, the trustee for the estate is now taking it to the highest court in the land the Supreme Court uh, They uh, he and his lawyers have filed a writ of, I'm going to mispronounce this because it's some crazy Latin legal word, a uh, certiorari. Something like that. Uh, which is effectively just asking the Supreme Court to uh, to go over the, not necessarily to hear the cases, but to go over the information that's already been presented. Uh, so something to note about this is there's usually approximately seven to eight thousand writs of this kind that are presented to the Supreme Court every year and of those seven to eight thousand usually about 80 of them actually get uh, reviewed by the Supreme Court so likely this ruling is going to stand I feel like even if the Supreme Court were to go over this information they would still stand so I it's it's just somebody got poor and needed a couple of bucks and said, hey, I own this music that kind of maybe sort of sounds a little bit like this Led Zeppelin song once. And so he took legal action and that uh, hopefully this is the last we hear of this. But if we hear more, we'll definitely follow up. That is all we have for follow ups and corrections. No corrections this time. So just follow ups. And now we're into the, the actual news. First on the actual news list is Ozzy Osbourne. And this time we're talking about a biopic movie, not the uh, the documentary series is going to AMC. This time, it is a biopic that, again, Sharon and Ozzy's production company are doing for Ozzy. So, uh, to, though, to be fair, Sharon has said it's not going to be as easily digestible. I mean, those are my words, not hers. But basically, that's the, the gist of what she's saying. Is it's not going to be pretty and shiny and easily packaged like the Queen biopic, where they kind of glossed over some of the more ugly parts of that uh, band's history. This is going to be pretty raw again, according to Sharon. So how raw that is, Lord only freaking knows, because it's them making a biopic basically about themselves and they have a writer for it now. So it is, you know, heading forward. I will follow up on this just because I'm really interested to see where this goes. Uh, next on the list, we're talking about Lincoln Park. They just announced this morning as I'm filming this that they are uh, doing a 20th anniversary collection for their Hybrid Theory record. It's their first major label record release. Uh, it, it's, it's huge. This is gigantic. If you are a Linkin Park fan, kind of, then there is something here for you. The biggest package, you can, it breaks down into the smaller parts, but basically the biggest package, if you want everything that they're offering for this 20th anniversary collection, it's going to be $200. You get five CDs, three DVDs, three LPs, a bunch of other like promotional material, uh, re reproduction of their, uh, 
original street team demo, a reproduction of a backstage laminate, a reproduction of a bunch of really awesome stuff, artwork, pictures of Chester, uh, really some really awesome stuff. Again, if you're a Linkin Park fan, even kind of. Uh, you uh, Obviously, there will be breakdowns, uh, so you can get just the LPs, you can get just the DVDs, you can get just the CDs, you can get just the digital download. For the $200, you also get a digital download for all of the stuff on the list. Um, it's, so it's really two of these records, two of the CDs, rather, two of the CDs that they're offering in this package are previously unreleased. The entirety of those two. So one of them is 18 tracks and one of them is 12 tracks. Uh, the 18 tracks kind of, sort of, has been kind of released once uh, because it was... Uh, given to their fan club, I feel like is what that was. Uh, but it's as far as like by and large to the public, these are brand new songs. Uh, it couldn't, there was no official word if they've been remastered or if they've just been pressed to a CD and sent out as they are. Either way, it would be kind of cool because it'd be kind of cool to hear their early production and also it'd be nice to hear some modern production on early recordings. So either way, I'm okay with it. It's just really cool. I thought you guys would want to know. We're moving on. Uh, next, we're talking about Three Doors Down. Well, kind of. <laughs> Next, we're talking about the lead singer for Three Three Doors Down, Brad Arnold, who has released his first solo song, not a record, just the song. Uh, the song was produced with help of his drummer. It's called Wicked Man. Uh, you can go get it wherever. You can go stream it on YouTube even. Might be doing a reaction to this one later. I'm still kind of on the fence. If you want to see that, let's you know, let me know in the comments. But uh, very interesting. It's about our current situation in the world, and so really interested to hear what a conservative musician has to say about that because we already know what all the rest of them have to say about it. So uh, that's interesting. Moving on. Next piece has to do with a band called Arsames. Uh, I'm I'm assuming that's how that's pronounced because they're from Iran, so I don't really know, but. This band, Arsames, was just jailed and sentenced to 15 years in prison for the crime of being a metal band. I, I, this is just insane. So uh, the, the charges officially, I believe, had something to do with making satanic music, and they were guilty of that because guitars and distortion, right? That's, that's all you need. And screamy vocals. Um... That's crazy. But the crazier part about this is not only did they escape the uh, hold of the Iranian government, but they also escaped the entire country. They are no longer in their home country of Iran. They have fled to un, uh, undisclosed areas and more power to them. That's 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 just that there needs to be a biopic about these guys. Right. Uh they just, I, I can't even, we're just going to move on because I'm just going to keep stumbling because that is just awe-inspiring. That's incre it's incredible. Uh, and then our final piece for music has to do with Converge. Converge, uh, if you remember, they contributed a, a song, it was a cover song called, where did it go? Wol the Wolverine Blues. Um, they, they contributed to a Napalm Death record, a Napalm Death tribute record, I believe, um, which is interesting because it's an entombed song whatever so as part of the recording process for that song that they then gave to napalm death uh it, they had other vocalists come in and record the song so that they could take whatever they wanted and kind of mesh all of these vocalists together so jacob bannon and then there were four other vocalists um well as uh, the result of the entombed, the original entombed vocalist uh, Lars Goran Petrov, uh, he just came out uh, and announced to the world that he has been diagnosed with an uncurable form of cancer, which is horrible. Uh, so in order to raise money for his treatment, Converge has taken to their band camp and released five different versions of this song, with each with one of those vocalists that they recorded with originally for the name palm death uh, version of this so all proceeds you can find a link down in the description all proceeds from this song on their band camp are going to lars uh to help with his cancer treatment that's a heavy one to deal with and that's how we're going to be ending the music section we are talking tv streaming and uh tv streaming just like the rest of the sections well except for the rumors section <laughs> it has Follow-ups. Uh, we have just two follow-ups real quick. First up, 
is the DC FanDome experience, which is now this weekend. I'm pretty sure I didn't write the date down because I take awesome notes. But uh, Saturday... I, uh, no, next Saturday. I apologize. The 22nd. I do remember that. So next Saturday, the 22nd is the DC Fandome Experience. What is the follow-up? You stop rambling and get to the dang news already. Uh, the follow-up is that it will, in fact, only be available for 24 hours on their website. So this is this is partially my conjecture is that... <laughs> The IGN and Nerdist and all of these other like big nerdy media outlets are going to do what they always do. GameSpot, all of these, the Game Informer probably is going to get in on the action. I would imagine uh, they're they're going to do what they do when it comes to live streams, and they're going to record live streaming content from DC. I don't know if DC will have found a way to hinder this, there's no way to stop it. Cause at the very least, if you can put it on a computer screen, you can use a screen capture program and record it that way. So, or stream it that way. So very likely it won't only be available, but it'll only be available from DC Warner brothers for 24 hours. And then it's going to be a little harder to find and it's going to be easily dissected because it's it, it sounds like it, because of this because of the nature of this because it'll be very hard for someone to watch 24 hours of straight content. It sounds like each of the sections of the FanDome experience uh, have programming that runs approximately eight hours. So if you want to watch everything, you will be awake and watching your computer screen for 24 hours straight because there's six sections. That's that's more than 24 hours. So there's it's impossible. There's four. No, no, there's six. There's six sections of the fandom. So that would be freaking impossible to do. So you're going to have to try and find some of this in post. It's just a very interesting decision from DC Warner Brothers. But yeah, so that's the follow-up there. Next follow-up uh, is real quick, and it's about The Witcher. Uh, there is uh, news that they have resumed filming season two, and this is honestly I uh, something like three weeks ahead of schedule, which is a great sign for things to come. So those are our follow-ups. Now let's get into the news. First up, we have SpongeBob SquarePants is getting a special in off yeah uh, so patrick star it's going to be called the patrick star show and it's going to be a late night style talk show that patrick hosts and it's animated and i don't know what this is going to be i'm a little too old to be super excited about spongebob that was a few years past my time, so I don't necessarily understand the draw, but it will be interesting to see how they turn what is technically a children's program into something resembling a late night talk show. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work, but we will definitely be keeping tabs on it. Now, next, we are talking about Star Wars The Holiday Special. That's right, The Holiday... Well, okay, not The Holiday Special, but a new holiday special. This time, it's going to be Legos. It's going to be on Disney Plus in November, and it's going to be it's going to be very similar. It's going to be the, the Day of Days, I believe is what they called it, for the... Uh, for the, the Wookiee celebration uh, is going to be a central focus of this. There's going to be a section where Ray goes through time and talks to Jedi from the past, present, and future, and just very interesting. I don't know how they're going to fit all of the things they've announced into 45 minutes on Disney+, Plus, but it is a Lego thing, so... It's it, there's only so much Lego you can stare at, I guess. I don't know. It's but it'll be great. It'll be a lot of fun. The Lego movies and the Lego games and all the Lego properties uh, in this vein are very well written, very well crafted, very well executed. So this very likely is going to be right along the same lines of all that. And we're moving on. Uh, our final piece for TV streaming has to do with Avatar The Last Airbender, the live action series over on Netflix. The original creators who were a part of this, uh, Michael Dante DiMartino De and Brian Konietz... Koni oh, I'm going to mispronounce this. I'm sorry. Konietzko? 
uh, both have left the project. They have both released separate announcements saying the saying this, uh, but ba- basically both announcements say approximately the same thing, and that's they weren't getting the kind of support from Netflix that they that they felt like they should be getting, and therefore they don't agree with where things are going. And so they were like, "All right, the, my creation, I know thee not." Uh, they have both stepped away. It is still being developed. It is still happening, and they both readily acknowledge the fact that it could still be good. It just won't be what exactly what they wanted. Uh, and that's paraphrasing, but that's very close to what the DiMartino said. Uh, so uh, we will we will be watching this with a trepid eye, uh, but that is all we have for TV streaming. Let us now move into movies. Uh, movies, our follow-ups here have to do with the Fear Street movie collection, uh, the three horror movies that were uh, adapted from the R.L. Stein books by Lee Janik, 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 something, uh, have now found a release home. The place that is going to be releasing these three movies is going to be Netflix starting next summer. So summer of 2021, they will be, they will begin releasing then. So, presumably July-ish we'll be, we'll be getting one a month on Netflix from this, uh, again, Lee I'm going to butcher the name one more time but J-A-N-I-A-K Janiak um, L-E-I-G-H is the first name Very, I'm very interested to see because the Goosebumps adaptation was so unique <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how they approach another one of R.L. Stein's properties uh, next uh, follow up has to do with The Flash and this one kind of flies in the face of some of the rumors we've been talking about about the new Flash movie in that Ezra Miller has been used to promote the Flash stuff over at the DC Fandome event so that leads one to believe that maybe he's not on his way out and he will in fact be the star of the movie when it releases I mean, I kind of said that that was how that was going to go, even though, whatever. All right, moving on. (laughs) Next, uh, we're talking about the actual news. And the first thing we're talking about in actual movie news is movie theaters. Both Metrolux and AMC have announced that they will be opening their theaters on August 20th. So next Thursday. Uh, the the biggest part of this is AMC because AMC is going to be offering a couple of really interesting things. On the date of August 20th, you'll be able to go see movies for 15 cents. That's right. You heard that correctly because that's how much a movie cost when they opened their first theater in 1920. They're going to be doing that again for this release. However, it's not as great as you're thinking it is because it is going to be classic movies. It's going to be like A New Hope. It's going to be uh, really old, uh, not necessarily really old, because Inception's on the list as well. There's there's a, a number of movies that have been released, and most of them for a very, very long time, uh, that you'll be able to go see in theaters for 15 cents. And that is only on August 20th. Now, going forward from that, they will still continue to do things like this. It will just be a $5 ticket charge and not a 15 Sent ticket charge. Uh, no word on how long this program is going to continue. Very likely until they can fill up all of their theaters with uh, brand new movies. So brand new movies like Mulan and Tenet and so on and so forth will all be getting the theatrical treatment, assuming another act of God does not happen between now and then. So that's what we have on that one. Next, we're talking about Batman soul of the dragon. This one's really quick. We just, uh, they just announced the main cast uh, voice cast for this animated movie. Also, this animated movie exists. I really, I don't know how I missed this until uh, about three days ago when I started the research for today's episode. Uh, So this one's going to be, uh, before we get into the casting, it's going to be set in the 70s. So I don't know how that's going to screw with their timeline in the animated universe, but I digress. Uh, The casting is as follows. We have David Giantoli as Batman, Michael Jai White as Bronze Tiger, Kelly Hu as Lady Shiva, and Mark Descascos. I don't, I'm sorry for mispronouncing that name as well. Uh, but uh, he will be playing Richard Dragon. So if you missed that, the guy from Grimm is going to be the new voice of Batman, at least for this movie. I'm very interested to see what Giantoli is going to bring to the role. Uh, that's all we have, though. So we got to move on to the last piece in movies, and that is Twilight of the Marats. And this one almost could have gone in rumors. 
Almost. <laughs> but because it comes directly from Kevin Smith and it it's been known that Ben Affleck is very willing to work with Smith again. Uh it sounds like Ben Affleck is going to be in Twilight of the Mallrats, uh, assuming, again, another act of God doesn't get in the way. But Kevin Smith said he wrote the character, uh, the character's name, I'm sorry, I forgot it. Oh, where did it go? Shannon Hamilton wrote the character into the script. That is the character that uh, Affleck played in the first Mallrats movie, so it will be him returning now as a convicted felon because because I love Kevin Smith and that's hilarious somehow. But yeah, so that is where we're at with Twilight of the Mallrats. That's all we got for movies. Gaming and tech, we have one quick follow-up on gaming and tech, and that is Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite has been delayed. It is no longer going to be a launch title for the Xbox Series X. It is moved until 2021. No specifics that I could find anyway as to when it has been pushed back, but it will be pushed back till sometime in 2021. Hopefully not too deep into 2021. Uh, And then as far as actual news goes, we got a very interesting situation surrounding Fortnite. Uh, If you haven't heard... Fortnite uh, just pissed off everybody. <laughs> so specifically Google and uh, the uh, and Apple. So originally it was Apple and then Google followed suit, literally. Uh, Apple has rules for their Play Store. This is why you can't get uh, the Google Stadia in, in the Apple Play. And this is also why or the, the Apple... Uh, the iTunes store, whatever, however they have that structured. Um, this is why you can't get it there. This is also why the uh, the Xbox Game Pass Unlimited uh, app is not available on iOS. Is because you have to do you have to go through Apple for everything effectively. And what Fortnite just did is they created a loop where a loop around rather where you could buy your in game purchase your buy your in game money so the V bucks directly through Fortnite, directly from Epic Games, and completely cut Apple out of the the deal. And not just that, but it's a 20% discount. So instead of it being $10, it's $8 to get V-Bucks. So Apple did not like that. They removed Fortnite from the iOS. And then uh, Google did something very similar, though it's a little less serious over on the Google platform because... The, the the Google Play Store is not the only store you can get on an Android device. You can get up there's literally dozens of other stores and it and Fortnite is listed legitimately in at, at least two or three of those other stores. So, and there's also you can sideload. You can go download it directly from Fortnite's website and then install it that way. You don't need to use a store at all. So, the big issue here is Apple and Fortnite is is really sticking it to them because now not only are they saying, well, screw it, we're just not going to be on iOS. They are suing Apple as well as Google uh, for because they they they're saying this is a monopoly because they they're according to the the terminology in the contract in the terms that they agreed to. Uh, if you are purchasing something in this app that can then be used outside of the app, which technically in a way v bucks qualify as that because you can purchase v bucks and let them sit in your account and then from your console you can cash in those v bucks so you're not using their app at that point you're using the actual game on your console Uh, so because that is the situation that is their their loop around so that's what they're taking to court with both google and apple be very interesting to see how this plays out that's all we really have right now for that so that's and that's it for gaming as well. So next we're talking. Oh, no. Well, I mean, technically that is it for gaming. And next is a tech piece. And the tech piece has to do with Adobe uh, in the world of deep fakes and the world that we've been in for a number of years at this point with fake images. You can you can put anybody's face on anybody's body and make it look really, really good. That being said, Adobe is doing what they can with their Photoshop application, their Photoshop program to circumvent this, to show all of the fingerprints. So every time somebody does something to an image, it writes it into the metadata of that image so you can see all of the different uh, editors effectively of a thing so there that this is just one way to try and kind of combat the the negative results of deep fakes and such uh very interesting to see if how this is going to develop and if it's going to also make its way into their video editing softwares as well because then that gets a little bit more sticky but that is all we have for gaming and tech sorry for the 
confusion. Now we're talking comic books and books, and we actually, there's only two pieces. One of them is a follow-up. Comic-Con. Uh, first up for this, man, uh, all Comic-Cons are postponed or canceled. That's basically the gist of this. The, we got the official announcement about two weeks ago, and I just didn't put in the episode because it was it is what it is. Uh, for Salt Lake Comic-Con, we also got the official announcement just this week for New York Comic-Con, and we're getting a quasi-unofficial announcement from uh, Starfest Denver, which is one of the oldest conventions in the country, uh, that it too is indefinitely postponed, very likely won't see it until 2021. So as sad as that is, it's kind of expected. We're moving on to the news. And in comic book news, we got one brand new announcement that's pretty freaking awesome, and that is Lobo is getting a spinoff book, a one-off, a uh, one-shot book from the uh, Dark Knight's death metal story that's going on. It's going to be called... Uh, Infinite Hour Extreme. It will feature the writing talents of Frankie Thierry, Becky Cloonan, uh, as well as a f- a two or three other ones, uh, and art by Dale Eagle Sam, um, and the, who is the main artist, and then there's going to be some cover artists and so on and so forth. So that should be hitting shelves. Uh, I'll put out on the screen because <laughs> I can't remember. I didn't put in the notes. I take great notes. We're moving. We're into the rumor mill and rumors. We've got four of them. First up is Green Lantern. There are rumored casting announcements that are going to be coming around the corner. So first up, we have Michael Kenneth Williams uh, as Sinestro. James Marsden and Linda Cardellini uh, will be Hal Jordan and Carol Ferris. And Jovan Adepo will be John Stewart. This is... I... <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go into all four of them and the likelihood for all four of them. So we're just going to give this a general twenty percent likelihood. I I honestly feel like uh, Michael Kenneth Williams is because of his stature right now, and he's kind of on his way up. Yeah, he the of of all of these makes the most sense. Um, the rest of them, I, but as Sinestro, that's the part that really kind of throws a wrench in it for me. I don't necessarily see him as Sinestro. Uh, so yeah, just generally speaking, 20% likelihood, especially considering the source for this or the sources, I guess, for this about 20% likelihood that this is happening. Uh, next rumor we're talking about is injustice and that is injustice three, the game rumors are abounding that injustice three is going to be announced at the DC fandom experience. And then boss logic releases this image with, uh, some references to the Watchmen in it. And just, it looks fantastic. And boss logic has done work for NetherRealm Studios in the past. So everyone's going, well, this is definitely a sign and Ed, Ed Boone is going to be on a panel for the fandom stuff and blah, blah, blah. All of this, absolutely, we're going to be seeing. No. No, we're not. <laughs> uh the, based off of the things that Boone has said, uh, specifically that they're going to extend the... Um, they're going to extend the support for Mortal Kombat 11 longer than they have in previous years. Uh, they're currently hiring. We have seen them post jobs uh, listings for certain things. So they are gearing up for Injustice 3. They are gearing up for potentially another project as well. But they are not working on anything other than Mortal Kombat right now. Uh, and, and, and I know that's probably... I'm probably a little bit biased in that direction because that's my favorite of all of the things that they do. It's honestly one of my favorite of all of the things, period. Um, so, I mean, take so kind of co- flavor that in how you take this information from me. But uh, Boone has said that, that there's so many things going on with Mortal Kombat specifically that it doesn't make sense that we would be seeing an injustice announcement this early. Very likely sometime in 2021, maybe this time in 2021. Absolutely, that that would be expected. But right now, there's way too much on their plate in the Mortal Kombat realm of things. And they still have to gear up, uh, 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 the staff up rather, for these other their projects so just doesn't make any sense to me i'm saying zero percent likelihood that this is going to happen uh and then next we have more rumors about Iceman, and it's just more rumors about shia labeouf and they're coming from better sources now so this is starting to pick up a little uh steam if you will uh so yeah that's the likelihood for shia labeouf i can't remember what i did in the last episode i didn't 
double check my notes from that. But I, I'm saying because of the source, because of the source this time, we're looking at probably 35 to 40 percent likelihood now that uh, Shia LaBeouf will be Iceman. And he's also been rumored for Wolverine. He's also been rumored for. Well, I don't remember what the other one was, but this one is the only one that's been coming from multiple sources for a, a, a slightly more significant amount of time. So there is that. And then our final rumor for the episode is Hawkman. We talked previously about how Michael B. Jordan was rumored to be looked at for Hawkman. And the two new actors that are uh, being added to the rumors list are Michael Fassbender and Army Hammer. Um, Fassbender, I think, might be a little too old. Well, I don't know. The Rock is Black Adam, so maybe that makes a little bit of sense. But Army Hammer seems to be an, 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 a very interesting and I feel like a very viable choice for this. So um, Fassbender, I'm going to say 10, 10% likelihood that that's actually legit. But Army Hammer, because I want that to be a thing, we're going to go 20% on that one. Uh, so that's what we've got for rumors, guys. And the episode. What did I miss? What should we talk about the next one? Let me know in the comments down below. If though you need to go deeper into the conversation, jump over to the website, generalnerdy.net, see all of the other things there, or the Patreon if you want to go even further into the nerd stuff. Uh, Patreon.com slash generalnerdy. That is the place to see all of the stuff. Get behind the paywall and get all the extra content. Uh, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all of the stuff if you haven't already. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, you can click or tap one of the two boxes that should be below my face right about now. Again, subscribe button's right there in the middle, so click it, do the stuff. Thank you very much, nerds. Before we go, always, always remember that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>